in Oliana in Spain. It's like a really famous place for climbing over here. Um, and I just thought I'd do a bit of a van tour. So this is a Ford Transit 2012. Um, I don't know how big the engine is. There's like 340 or something on the back. So as we go inside the cab, we can see that it's essentially closed off. It just looks like a builder's van. This kind of means that from the outside of the van, you can't really tell that it's a camper. So far, the camper's been doing really well. I've been living in for four months. Um, there's not a huge amount I changed. Maybe I'd upholster the seat a little bit better because it just doesn't look so good. So I really like this seat design. Um, it's a really nice place to seat with your feet up or kind of on the side. Uh, and just to like do some work or read a book when you're just looking out over these like amazing mountain or sea views. It's kind of just a generally like a nice place to be. Uh, I don't really like it to be very light in the morning, else I just wake up really early. Um, so basically this black outline has been great. Um, basically it slides down behind these two pieces of wood uh, and they kind of like got like a, like a curve shape in the bottom. It just like locks it in really nicely. Um, pretty much stops all the light coming in and also stops the light going out. So it just makes it a little bit less obvious that someone's living in the van. If say you're in like, a, like an urban environment and you don't want to be say conspicuous. I was kind of like persuaded almost not to have a heater in the van. Apparently you didn't need it. But like here in Spain, it's like December. Although it's kind of hot in the day, like sometimes just too hot to climb in the sun. In the night, it's like negative something. Like the windows are like covered in ice and down the side of the van, it's freaking freezing. So to be able to just have a heater and just like click a switch a couple of times and then basically be warm, it's a game changer. It's like totally worth having a heater. So my heater is a Propex heater and it's kind of like I've got a thermostat. So you set the level and basically it will kind of come on and off over, over the night. It's a little bit noisy, but you kind of get used to it and it's fine. So some beautiful heat coming out of there and it just kind of blows up and fills up the whole van. I'd probably put it in a slightly different place if I was going to do it again, maybe here. Um, but other than that, it works really well. The heater is run off um, LPG or the auto gas, the same as my cooker. And you fill that up from like a gas station. Uh, the last time I filled my canister from almost empty, it cost like nine euros. Uh, and if you're not using the heater um, and you're kind of cooking mostly for like two or three people, because when I've been out, like a lot of people just end up cooking in my van because it's got a two hob heater cooker and it's really easy. So that usually lasts like three or four months. But if you're using the heater, then maybe it's more like a month. But even then, like to be able to just fill up a gas station for nine euros and be entirely warm for an entire month, that's just totally worth it. LPG, it all seems to like every country's got its own like a nozzle adapter and you just fill it up in a garage. So it's really quite easy to do. Um, these, this is UK, this is somewhere else, this is somewhere else, not Spain, unfortunately. Spain's got its own one, a Euro adapter, but um, the garage near me at the moment, they've, they've got an adapter you can use, so you just kind of screw it on and it's, and it's totally fine. So this is where I fill up my fuel, and this is where I fill up my LPG gas. I have a Smev um, sink and cooker combo. It has an electric tap, which has a, a like a water pump submersed, and the tap is basically a switch. Um, it doesn't have automatic lighting, but it's easy enough with a lighter. Uh, and again, this runs off the LPG. So the water comes from this container, it's 20 litres. It goes up through the pump powered into the tap, comes out the bottom of the sink into this 20 litre um, jerry can, which is a waste wastewater. And it never really is filled more than that because mostly um, we drink a lot of this water anyway. This fan, um, it's kind of like 30 pounds or something. Um, and it kind of works pretty well. I mean, I was a bit skeptical at first at like how much it would actually extract, but I've had to clean it a couple of times where the oil kind of builds up and, and there's no oil on the other surfaces. It feels completely fine. So it seems to be working really well for like kind of using it as an extractor fan for cooking. As for like living in the van, um, this shelf's been really useful. Mostly it's like olive oil, spices, washing up liquid, tea. We need tea. This is one of the most important things in the van. Um, and kind of like cups and things. And these beautiful fake plants, they make such a difference.
Now by dividing the cab away from the main area, it has the disadvantage of you kind of have less space and you can't put a revolving chair. But what it does mean is I can put the cooker here, have a nice chair by the window. I'm not limited to where the height of the window so I can put a big standard sort of uh, window in, in where, the, where it's meant to go. And with the slider, it's been great. Um, so right now the air temperature is super cold, but if I wanted to, I could shut this door, leave the cab open and it's like a greenhouse and it just warms the van. I can just right now just feel the heat coming into the main part of the van. The other cool thing is that, I mean, I put a layer of insulation and there's the carpet and it kind of seals itself off really well. So at night time when it's freaking Baltic, like the front of the cab is going to be a huge heat loss because it's just made of like so many windows basically. Um, by closing it off, it stops two things. One, super all my heat going out through the windows. Number two, it stops a lot of the condensation on the inside of the cab. So in the morning, I don't have like ice on the inside of the windows and it's just kind of easy just to get up, go and start driving. Um, the other nice thing about the slider is like when you're like camping in some like slightly dodgy place, uh, you slide, you got the slider up, you can't see really that you're in a van and it doesn't feel like you're in a van. So you're just like chilling out in this like little lot, kind of like cabin feel place. And it's just really nice. It kind of detaches you from the reality. Um, yeah, so, and it's quite easy just to slide up. It's a little bit stiff. Um, I got these two clips in here, which kind of hold it up, but not very well. So I just have like a slider bolt. Um, it kind of goes through and locks it into place for, for when I'm driving. So the thing I'm most happy about in the van is, has to be the lighting. Um, if we turn off the spotlights and you only have this indirect like light glow, ah, it's amazing. It just feels such a cozy, warm environment. Um, and you turn these on if you need kind of more, more direct light. Um, another kind of good thing is I'm glad I didn't bother putting in like a sound system. Not only is it expensive to have an amplifier and a lot of faff and things, but actually all you really need is this like nice little um, Bluetooth based speaker and it basically provides enough decent quality sound to fill this small space of a van. So storage wise, um, I have like down the side of the bed these big like this long cabinet and like Kind of, it's quite deep, it goes to the base of the, the, the depth of the bed. Um, and mostly I kind of keep clothes in these. I've got some like dividers in this one, which are just like cheap Ikea things. But in here, I haven't, I haven't just got nothing. Like, because basically I just don't have that many clothes or I don't need that many clothes. So this one's basically empty. And underneath the bed, there's like a, like this deep, the entire size of a bed of storage. So even though there's like the food storage at the front and at the back there's like climbing gear, portal ledge, like extra gas cans, like loads of stuff, but it's still way more storage than I actually need. So in terms of storage, especially having a fixed bed, like it just means you can have tons of storage under the bed and you don't have to put things on the ceiling. Um, these cupboards I kind of use just to stash like big coats and jumpers and stuff and some other electronics. Um, uh, and they're just really useful as a quick access point. This kitchen cabinet, which I screwed in, um, many people said that this magnetic switch would not actually work, um, but actually it's really good. It's kind of got this like push click mechanism and so far it's not fallen open when I'm driving and it's worked really, really well. These are kind of like my food cupboards. Um, essentially, it's not a huge amount in them because I'm hanging at a friend's house right now, but they be really good. Being kind of aerated, it kind of stops them getting sweaty. And also I have this kind of art drawer, which kind of contains all sorts of stuff, including some x-rays um, of like kind of creative materials or creative work I want to do. Behind the, uh, the, the, the sofa back, I have um, a sleeping bag. And there's also a secret wine store, which is not so secret, I guess. Um, I have a, an extra security lock on the van, which is good because I think these van doors are kind of maybe easier to open than, than the other doors on the van. Um, and this is kind of like my messy storage I have underneath. But basically it's like really badly packed. It's like a portal edge, big box of climbing gear, some tools, a little, little gas canister of diesel, washing up liquid if I go to a laundrette or something. Um, and other than that, just like, a shitload of ropes and stuff. Um, 
but like it's just more storage than I need. These are the, the drawers. Um, they've actually, they've worked really well and I've been kind of surprised. I thought maybe they'd kind of fall apart at some point because of my dodgy craftsmanship, but actually they've been really solid. Uh, I just use this bungee. It's a bit low tech, but basically the bungee just comes over it uh, when I drive. And if anything does slide out and they don't, they're not too prone to it, they kind of just bounce back in and that's worked so far. It's worked really well. People are always like, why didn't you put a shower in your van? Um, mostly because like it takes up a load of space um, and in, in the experience of the people I spoke to, not many people actually used the shower in their van. It became like a storage cupboard because firstly, if you have a shower, then you have to have like a 70 litre water container. Uh, it's just kind of like a lot of hassle. So one easy way around it is just to have a shower at other random places or wash in rivers or lakes. Um, but if that's not available or difficult, then a solar shower works really well. Um, this holds 20 litres, it costs about £10 or something, like $12. Uh, and I fill it up and I put it in the front of the cab. Uh, that kind of heats it up to a, actually quite a hot temperature. Um, sometimes it's too hot. Uh, and then what I do is I hang it up on the side of the van. Up here. <laughs> And then I use a shower curtain and I attach it to the van just using these like little neodymium magnets which are just quite amazing. Um, and it just kind of will give you all the privacy that you need. Um, and I put a couple more in each on the bottom side and then there you have it. You have your shower compartment and yeah a little bit of water sometimes gets on the wood but I've treated the wood with Danish oil and then all I need to do is just wipe it down with a towel and it's legit. Um, and one solar shower, I found it's enough to clean two people, which is actually pretty good. So the solar system, it has a 300 watt panel on the roof. I have a 40 amp solar charge controller, which goes to two 140 amp hour batteries. So this is my beautiful solar panel. Um, it's 300 watts, one single panel, and it basically gives me electricity for two people to live off. Considering that it's December now, um, but we are in Spain, so the weather is pretty warm um, and sunny, but it's basically providing me enough power to run like these ridiculous LED lights which go down the side of the bed, which are the most power consuming thing in the whole van. They actually power, take enough power to probably power a small fridge. Um, it's like charging laptops, charging phones, running the heater at night, um, and just kind of like, you know day-to-day -day, like power requirements and it's just kind of really cool that one solar panel is kind of enough like obviously I'm not running a kettle because I have gas um, so like some of the high power normal things of your house aren't there but in terms of like your general electricity requirements this single panel is enough for me and probably another person without a problem it, originally I kind of made this folding bracket because I wondered whether basically I would need to be able to angle it up so like it is this time of year when the sun's so low to kind of get enough power um, but so far like touch wood I haven't really had to um, so these bolts just remain well done up um, and kind of pleased the way I did it it's it's completely solid and nothing's rattled loose after four months of considerable amounts of um, off-road driving around climbing areas one of the things people are always like seem to be most paranoid about is condensation um, and the way I did the van it was like pretty well insulated and other areas have been covered with auto carpet um, it's kind of interesting like the condensates obviously on the window um, but that doesn't seem to be too much of a problem it kind of evaporates and dries off pretty quickly so you can see there's like some pretty heavy condensation happening but this is on the outside of a seal um, and I've also noticed there's some condensation around like the light units because I haven't been able to fill those in with spray foam to insulate them. Um, but other than that, um, sometimes uh, on the metal hooks in the ceiling, there's some kind of condensation because it's connected to the metal work, so it's, it's cooler. But mostly um, condensation has been really not a problem. Um, I'm really pleased with how that's gone. I bought a uh, small table, which kind of really nicely fits in this slot. It's kind of like quite a basic table but it works really well if I want to kind of have like a space to work inside the van because it fits just perfectly in here um, and it basically gives me my home mini van office see doing all the work 
This little bin has been like a triumph. Um, kind of like just an Ikea bin, but it's basically just small enough to take enough waste that you wouldn't want to build up anymore. Um, if it's like a big carton, I just kind of leave it out and put it in a bin. But otherwise, it just works really well and it's never slid out. I've just got these blocks of wood in here, which kind of stop it from sliding out. Uh, it just kind of like press fits in. It's really nice, pretty easy. Other things I'm kind of happy about the build, um, using this kind of like mat just glued in here has worked really nicely. It's been like a nice tidy way to clean your feet before coming in the van. This um, aluminium kind of edging has worked really well. It's really protected the edge of the van from any damage. Um, and the laminate flooring, it's been good. Um, sometimes it has a tendency to like, kind of like slightly wear where these drawers have slid in and out. But in the main, it's, it's done really well. So um, these kind of like attachment points have been handy. I haven't actually used the hammocks so much. Um, there hasn't really been a need for three people in the van. Um, but it's kind of still cool. Uh, and these attach other attachment points, if like, they've been useful for like tying random things up, but at the same time, um, they kind of be handy if you kind of did want to put a surfboard or something, then you could use these to strap it in and then use like the, the top level above the bed of the van. Uh, I think it, when, if that was the case, they'd be pretty indispensable. One thing when you do have a fixed bed, it means that you can't like have so much seating. But basically by having this slanted and flush cover design, it basically means you can just put a cushion up against it. Um, and then it's actually a really comfortable way to sit in the van. Uh, it's like quite nice lumbar support. And this is padded as well. So it's kind of comf comfortable to lean your head against. And you can easily have like four people like sitting against this wall and then like watching a movie or something. So it can make a really nice social space as well. So I've put together a blog which has got like most of the information about how I made the van, what materials I used and things like that and kind of the main construction techniques. Uh, if you follow this link you'll be able to find it. The day of my